Our theme for today is a writer who is possibly the author of the greatest novel of all time. He was also a gambler who accumulated huge debts. He was a sufferer of epilepsy, and he even survived being sentenced to death. He was left blindfolded waiting for the firing squad and received a last-minute pardon. Today we're talking about the Russian writer from the 1800s, Fyodor Dostoevsky. Now, his book, The Brothers Karamazov, which is going to be our main topic for today, has been highly praised by Sigmund Freud, Albert Einstein, Ludwig Wittgenstein, Martin Heidegger and Pope Benedict XVI. But before I go any further, I'd like to welcome our guest for today, Tyson Retz. Welcome to the show, Tyson. Hi there, thanks uh, for the invite. It's good to have you here. Now, I think it's really good for us to start by saying we are not as experts on Dostoevsky. I have never done any Russian studies. I've never read his texts in Russian. In fact, I've only read two of his books. So we're not going to be able to have all the answers or go through all the themes. I think that would be impossible in a two-hour program anyway. But what Tyson and I have in common is that we both really like his books. Now, I'm going to talk about how I started reading Dostoevsky, but before that, I'm going to ask you, Tyson, how did you start reading him? Um, well, I'm the, the, the third um, in the family. I've got two older brothers. Um, so a common trait of, of my childhood was that I pretty much did nothing um, originally. I pretty much just yeah. imitated my older brothers, I think. So are you uh, a you started... youngest child? No, no, no. Well, I have a younger sister, okay. um, but um, there's quite a gap between uh, me and her. Mm. Um, so I have two older brothers and, uh, you know, they started surfing, I start surfing. They mm. start playing basketball, I start playing basketball. Mm. And uh, I have to ask my brother this, and I've actually never had the conversation, but I think he probably started reading uh, the Russians. And when I say the Russians, I'm, you know, I'm talking about Tolstoy and Dostoevsky, yeah. Um, at the start, at least, um, probably in his early 20s. I'd um, have to check up, which makes me sort of my late teens, you know, 16, 17 sort of area. And um, I think he was reading Tolstoy. Uh, so I ended up reading Tolstoy. I read um, Anna Karenina. Again, I'd have to verify this with him. These are all kind of vague memories. Um, so, yeah, I, I got on to, to, to Russian literature through Tolstoy and Anna Karenina. Um, and then exactly how I actually procured this book that I have here today with me, I actually brought the, the Brothers Crumbs off with me. Um, I don't quite remember, but I obviously bought it from a secondhand bookshop because it's an old edition. It's the original translation uh, by Constant Garnett, um, and it's a lovely, lovely copy. And I think I had it on my, my bookshelf for a good couple of years before I finally got around to reading it um, in my final year of university. Don't know how I found the time to read it in my final year of university, but I guess uh, being immersed in all those those deep readings, you know, why not add another one to the mix? Um, I spent uh, I spent the uh, the winter break in France for a year, oh, for a year, for a month. Part of me um, uh, at the tail end of of reading it, I do remember the day that I actually finished it, yes, uh, and having a conversation in French. Mm with my uh with uh, the family I was saying with uh, about Dostoevsky and the book so it was quite a memorable moment uh finishing it but I I can't exactly remember actually starting it but it, it definitely was my final year of university yes um and from there I mean what, once you're introduced to the canon that is Russian literature as like most things you you know there's just, there's you could spend the rest of your life reading because there's so many references they reference yes. each other it's so rich that um, you go on to Google, you, you read uh, Chekhov, you, you read you, you read the other Russians because, um, of, yeah, you're introduced to the canon. So, yeah, that, that's mm. pretty much how I started reading it. Yeah. yeah, and I think what you've said about you had the book but you didn't read it for a while is probably not uncommon because it is a big book and it's a bit daunting. Mm. Uh, this is talking about the Brothers Karamazov in particular. Mm. And when I uh, first came across it, I was at university as well, but I was an engineering student, mm. so it really didn't fit in with the sorts of things I was studying. But mm. I'd once in a while go into the... Bit of a, an indulgence, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah well, to that, take you away from... from w the way that I... I ran into it. I was in the university bookshop, probably looking for a novel for a mm. bit of distraction, mm. because from an engineering point of view, you're not really working unless you're solving an equation. Sure, sure. And um, so 
I saw this great big pile of copies of the Brothers Karamazov, and the book really caught my attention. It intrigued me. It was, as I said, a big book, um, and it, the name of it just had this magical, mysterious kind of quality to it. Mm. It had a fascinating cover, and it was a. Who, who, who's on the cover of the? Or do you do you, do you know I the can't cover? Remember, it's no. a portrait. I imagine. I think it might have been one. Of yeah, the I can't. Uh, yeah. The Penguin edition. Yeah. I can't remember okay, now because okay. that's not the one I ended up reading. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, I saw it in the bookshop and thought, oh, that looks really fascinating. And I think I'd just finished reading Tolkien. Mm. And some of my friends had read Tolkien kind of years before. Mm. But the idea of sort of sinking my teeth into something else that was mm. substantial was pretty appealing. Anyway, that was, uh, that was when I was at uni. And it wasn't until four years later that I was moving into a study house and uh, I'd signed up to be a Christian minister, mm. that I was told by one of the other guys in the house that everyone had read The Brothers Karamazov, mm. all of these mm. guys, and uh, I sort of assumed that it must be required reading, yes. you know, that it was just sort of standard. Oh, yes, you know, it was like, you know, kids read Dr. Seuss and yeah, yeah, <laughs> trainee yeah. Christian ministers read The Brothers Karamazov. Sure, sure. Anyway, I did eventually read it. I won't mm. say how long it took me. It's funny you saying that you remember the day you finished it, because I do yeah, too. I, yeah. I got to the end of it and sort of was still kind of buzzing, mm. um, but it did take me quite a while mm. to get to the end of it. So now I want to just uh, move on to our next question. Mm. This book, The Brothers Karamazov, look, it's, it's an old book. It's about a faraway country. It's hard work. What is so good about it and why is it so philosophical? Okay, well, yeah, I mean... There's no doubt about it that it's hard work, but you know, at the risk of falling into to platitudes and cliches, you know, you know, pain, no pain, no gain, all that sort of stuff. But it is very satisfying, and it, it does take a lot of work, and you do invest a lot of mental energy into it. It is a, it is a project, as it were, um, just like uh, following an academic course or, or or training for a marathon or, or whatever it is you want to do in life. It is, it does, it takes commitment and and involves. Uh, you know, a, a degree of, of, of um, perseverance. Um, but in saying that, um, the the rewards are very high. You you these these characters that you that you learn of and that you actually um, come to encounter in this book or or, or any of Dostoevsky's books um, are with you for life. Um, I don't know these days uh, how people would react to the to to the comment that. You know, the the friends that or, or the characters that you meet in 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 literature or in good books are actually your friends. Absolutely, you know, and it might sound like a very nerdy and geeky or a <laughs> bookish thing. Well, I think to it's say. A, I think it's a sign of a good book that when you have finished mm. it, you miss the characters. Mm. Mm. Well, yeah, uh, but I probably mean it in a in in a different way than that. Even in that, yeah, you miss the characters because you miss reading it. You don't want the book to end because you're enjoying it so much. But I mean that these character actually. They're actually with you on a on an everyday sort of level. You actually think of them when you when you consider something or or or, or you're faced with something in life. You actually are you you, you can actually um, try and perceive how they would uh, treat the situation. Uh, um, and I, yeah, I, I know that's not really 